what happens at very high altitudes above 26,000 feet is the body starts shutting down systems it considers non-essential. The digestive system is one of those systems. Oh you don't God. actually need calories put in your body, or at least your body thinks that. If it's that close to death, it's going to prioritize brain, lungs, cardio. That's what wow. needs oxygen, nothing else. So no one eats above 26,000 feet, basically. You, maybe you eat half a Ritz cry, you feel ravenously hungry. You eat half a Ritz cracker, a bite of a Snickers bar, and you're like full and nauseous, like you just had a seven course meal. That's wow, your body, because it just crazy. isn't digesting. My body was super reliant on carbohydrates, which is actually the thing right now in endurance sports is we're learning we can use way more carbohydrates. You can be taking 100 grams of carbohydrates an hour in ultra racing and things like that, putting in really high amounts. And that's how my body worked. If I didn't wake up at six in the morning, the first thing I did, I'd eat, right? And then like whenever I was working out, I'd be eating gels and things like that nonstop. And it, I'm quite strong in that way. Once I got up high, I couldn't do that. And mm -hmm. I just started struggling with these huge energy bonks and peaks and it really didn't feel great. It turns out I went to the UC Davis Sports Performance Lab that works with a bunch of Olympic athletes and my fat adaptation, my ability to take fat from my body, fat stores and process them to make sugar to run low and low intensity energy in like zone one, zone two. It was terrible. I was converting to carbohydrate burning when my heart rate was only like a little over 100. Mm. And an elite endurance athlete isn't turning from fats to carbohydrates until they're in like the 140s. And I just had never, it seems, trained my body to do that and genetics, all these different things. So I spent a lot of that year retraining my body through fasted workouts and carb restriction and stuff that, again, is not necessarily recommended for athletes, but it was very specific to what I needed. And for me, I think it was just a remarkable change. My mm -hmm. second climb of the mountain, my, my energy levels were a lot more stable. It didn't make it easy. But I did have a very different confidence on that summit day thanks to that. So everything wow. came together. That's so fascinating to hear about your metabolism and all that stuff. Like you had to become fat adapted because you were used to running off of carbohydrates and at elevation above 26,000 feet, your body decides to shut down your digestion and you literally can't eat the fuel that you need. That's fucking crazy. Right. I never it's would wild. have imagined. That's so crazy. <laughs>